Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the first year anniversary of my channel and I just like filmed this little anniversary vlog to celebrate the fact. But I also thought I would film kind of like a different video today. Maybe also like as a special treat because it's my one year anniversary on YouTube or whatever. But mainly actually it's because I really like to listen to the Simply Podlogical podcast by Christina Ben. And I especially like their segments when they read these Reddit subtweets called Am I the Asshole? Um, and like yesterday they uploaded yet another video and I watched that or like listened to the podcast episode. And then I had the idea, wouldn't it be fun? Or like, couldn't I do a video like that as well? But give it a bookish twist. Like, are there Am I the Asshole scenarios that kind of involve books or literature? And I did some research and they're actually awesome. I have not yet read them because I want to react firsthand right here with you guys. Um, but yeah, I thought I would give this a try. Do like a little podcast style episode. So if you have something else to do right now, if you um, need to cook something, clean something, do your bullet journal setup or something like that, I highly encourage you to do that and just let this video play in the background. And yeah, let's give this a go. Now, if you're not familiar with the subreddit, Am I the asshole? It's basically the subtweet on Reddit and people post about scenarios, situations they have been in recently in which they have been accused of being an asshole and they present the situation to you guys, so like the reader, to either get some support and hear that they were justified in acting like they did. Or of course, it can happen that people judge, yeah, no dude, you really were the asshole in that situation. So today I will be reacting to some of those scenarios that have a bookish twist to them and see what I think about them. Let's go. Okay, the first one is called, am I the asshole for not wanting to buy a book? Okay, let's read it. Like, oh my gosh, it's a long text. Okay, let's get through this. Hi everyone, some time ago I was in school. Our teacher walks in and talks about a new project she wants us to do. Note that I'm in Italy and the school here is probably different from US. The teacher tells us that she wants us to buy a book if we want to, then in the second part of the school year, we would have read the writer. So the book's plot is about a girl who arrives in Italy and the girl faces racism. Honestly, the moment I heard the plot, I became really skeptical if the book had been any good. This is not my genre and I thought I wouldn't like it. Like I'm, I'm correcting a bit of the message because I would think the person is a native speaker. Um, I know I shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but there was something that just had hadn't convinced me. Then the teacher said, who doesn't want to participate? And told us to raise our hands and and I didn't raise mine and she looked at me strangely. I thought, why would I buy a book that I don't want to read and that I will not enjoy? It's a waste of time and money. So she said, why? And I said that I didn't want to buy, couldn't say for obvious reasons what I really thought. Then she said that we will be working on it in the future. Thus I said, yes, but the school didn't say to us that we must buy the book, so it's not required. Then she made like a face, yeah, it's right. When I thought things were going good, she said, you buy it, or I'll give you a two. Marks in Italy start from two to ten. Two isn't recoverable and you can't do nothing. Like similar to like an F in the US system. In Italy, we have to pay for our books and things like that, but these are all required by the school and are communicated by the school before the school begins. So because there wasn't any written document, I was a little surprised. The moment she said this, I said, well, I'll buy it. In that moment, doing anything more would have damaged me. So I just decided to buy the book. And that's it. Am I the asshole here? Whew, okay, this is a, a tricky one. It's about required reading in school, but then of course we have like this situation like was it required or not but i don't really want to talk about that i don't think that's like the interesting fact here but it's about that apparently this book talked about racism in one way shape or form and the student felt though it doesn't really say that whoever wrote this felt uncomfortable reading the book a book about racism because they experienced for example racism themselves i think what do they say I became really skeptical if the book would be any good. It's not my genre. Okay, well, in this scenario, I don't want to tell this person they're an asshole because if your school wants to buy you a book and maybe you don't have the financial means, of course, that's a tricky situation. Um, the part of the situation I want to judge, per se, I guess, is that this person says that just because they heard that this book would be about racism, they said they wouldn't be interested in because they seem to not generally be interested in books that talk about racism. Um, of course, we all have our preferences um, about topics we're interested in or like we like reading about and topics we don't like reading about. But actually, I think that's 
an aspect where it's really good that there are some things that are required reading in school because that way you're also like exposed to literature and texts that you might not naturally pick up in your private life because you you think that you don't like a certain topic or you don't like reading about it or you don't like a certain genre and then there are some situations in school or uni where you're still forced to be exposed to those but that can be really good because maybe you only have these preconceived notions or like no i wouldn't like that but then you read it and you realize so oh, hey i actually did value a lot of the messages this book talked about so apart from like the the money aspect and whether this was like now required or not required i think it's definitely always good to step outside of your comfort zone in all scenarios but also in like your literary world i also try to do this i, I mean i'm the first person to admit that the majority of the books I read are murder mysteries because that's my favorite genre but still every once in a while I pick up books that I know are not murder mysteries or like that I know are from a genre that I typically don't gravitate towards such as for example science fiction still I picked up Dune for example or also like a contemporary works are usually also not really my cup of tea but I have still read a plethora of those books within the last year and I'm always happy about it I'm never I have never yet regretted picking up a book because you can always learn something and that and that's not like necessarily saying you can learn something about a certain topic like that can also be the case but you can also always learn something about yourself your personal reading taste and it's also fun to see how your personal taste like change because you as a person you grow you change this person is still quite young I presume because they talk about being in middle school and obviously your taste will change from your middle school self um, from when you then go to high school and uni etc so especially for that aspect it's always important to dabble into things that you are not overly familiar with so there you go okay let's check out the next one am I the asshole for telling a peer that their book is shit oh okay <laughs> A guy in my class self-published a book about a year ago. It's only available online and I read a preview out of curiosity and it was really bad. Poorly written, barely legible and the plot and characters were all over the place. There was also an entire paragraph on the shape of a woman's breasts. Mm -hmm. As it's self-published, he's pushing salt himself and he keeps nagging me to buy it. It's £12 for an online only copy, which is insanely expensive. The book is 150 pages, that's like 9 pence per page. He keeps messaging me privately and bringing it up in conversations and I keep saying, yeah, I'll take a look at it later, sorry, I forgot last time. He has been asking me weekly, at least, for the last year if I will buy it and read it. This ranges from telling me in person, with no actual segue into it, that he wants me to read it and buy it. Yesterday he asked me again and this time he linked me to the book and asked me to buy it then and there. I snapped. I said, look, I've been trying to be nice for a year now, but I could not give less of a shit about this book. I read the preview and it's not something I have any interest in whatsoever. <laughs> and I will not spend 12 quid of my money on this bullshit you keep peddling. He was very upset, but I am so beyond sick of him telling me to buy his book. I'm a student, while I'm not broke, I don't have 12 pounds to spend on a 150 page online novel about the shape of a woman's tits. Am I the asshole? <laughs> oh my god, this one, this one's so funny. <laughs> so, I appreciate the issue we face right here. Now, some context I would require, I feel like, is how good of a friend is that? Because no matter what your friend does, if um, if they maybe like paint a picture and they show it to you and they want to hear your opinion or hear it's like your friend wrote something and they want you to read it and of course like it we can be faced with situations where friends of ours present us work of any shape or form they did and of course want us to appreciate it and like it and support them in doing so and i think that's really important obviously and i think in that scenario it's also okay to use what you call a white lie uh which is like lying but it's out of the context that you're trying to protect the feeling of someone you love and in that scenario it's like okay to lie say your friend painted this picture you don't think it's so cute but you can still be like oh yeah wow i really like the colors you're so creative whatever like that would be lying because you don't really like it but it's not like a bad thing to lie about right and maybe the same thing like i think 
both people in this scenario acted in an unfortunate way. Now, if this, but they, she says it's a guy in my class, so I'm assuming he's not your best friend. Um, in that case, it would be acceptable. Like, if it's only like a vague acquaintance, though, actually, it's kind of funny. I feel like often we are nicer to like vague acquaintances because we feel like, yeah, we can definitely not be honest with this person because I don't know them well. I could never tell someone I don't know at all that I think their book is bullshit. Um, I was someone you do know well and you feel like you can be honest with them, you'll be more likely to do that even though you're actually closer with that person. It's actually kind of messed up if you think about it. I think he was in the wrong for keeping on pushing her to buy it when she was like obviously not interested in it. She obviously didn't want to like buy and read the book if she hasn't done so for an entire year and he, and he should have taken the hint. Like he should have picked up on those context clues that she was always like, oh yeah, I'll do it later, then never mentioning it again. He should have picked up on that and be like, okay, like she she doesn't want to buy it. Because that's the thing, if you create something, piece of artwork, write a book, etc., of course it's normal, it's understandable that you want your friends, your family, whatever, to like it and support you, etc. But then at the same time, you have no right to force them to buy it. You have no right to force them to like it. And you also need to be okay with it if they tell you, hey, actually, it was not my cup of tea. You have to be okay with criticism like that. And especially considering apparently these two people are not really even close to one another. He was in no position to demand that she gets the book and raves about it and is super positive about it. Um, at the same time, could she have just like um, lied about it? Be like, yeah, I read the preview. She could have been like, she could have, tried to kind of like warp the truth a little bit being like yeah i read the the preview i'm i'm proud of what you did that's like really an accomplishment that you wrote a book when you were like still a young kid i suppose um but i don't have the, the money to to buy it or um i think it's not really my genre but still good work buddy you know she could have skirted around the subject like that i i'm imagining this guy to be somewhat prepubescent if he's talking about women's bodies and boobs and all of that obviously like I get it that she wouldn't be interested in reading about that but then again like she could have maybe been like mm, yeah maybe not really my thing but cool thing you did that and then kind of like moved on from the subject like that so yeah i mean the the verdict by the way apparently of the the people that read it here on reddit was that everyone sucks like both people sucked it was not that one person was in the right the other was wrong and i kind of agree with that as i just said i think the guy he should have relented from the subject he should have accepted that she doesn't want to get it but she she could have been um nicer about it or just like lied about it or like whatever like telling someone straight in the face what you did is absolute fucking bullshit i want to have nothing to do with that that's of course pretty harsh um but yeah whatever i i get that she didn't want to spend her money on that book that she didn't even want to read by a guy who's apparently not even like a close friend. I get it. Okay, next one. Am I the asshole for not reading a book? Okay, so the writer is female, 48, and she has a husband who's also 48 and who is male. This Christmas, I got a really nice present from my husband. It was a piece of antique art relating to a hobby close to his heart, which I had to order from abroad and had expensively framed. Cost me 500 pounds. Okay, everyone from the UK here, I get it. <laughs> he loved it. He got me a kitchen gadget. Husbands out there have to stop getting their spouses kitchen gadgets. That's not, there's so much wrong with that, but I get that that's not what this post is about, but do not get your spouse a kitchen gadget as a present. Worst thing, unless they specifically ask for it, but okay. Which I, okay. I should have finished the sentence because it literally said he got me a kitchen gadget, which I had said I wanted. Okay. Um, and a book that he heard a podcast about. And he helped his mom choose a pair of earrings for me, which he thought would be exactly what I'd like. And indeed they were because he bought, ding, 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 my favorite earrings. What is this post about? <laughs> uh, which I wear at least once a week. Identical pair from the same shop, which I haven't even tried to return because earrings usually aren't returnable. And I really don't have the time or energy to go through all the hassle of doing it. Oh, okay, so he made his mom buy earrings that she already had. Um, hassle is not a gift. He said at the time he felt really bad about me not getting anything as nice as a gift as I got him. I said it was fine, which it mostly is. 
it's not. <laughs> you can tell it's not. He didn't know I was pushing the boat out. I just wanted to do something nice for him. But I don't want to read the book he got me. It's a 700 page non-fiction brick about a subject that I have no particular interest in. <laughs> I read a huge amount and have got through maybe 15 books since Christmas. So it's fairly obvious I'm choosing not to pick this one up. He specifically asked me to read it several times now as the book I got you for Christmas and said he's looking forward to discussing it with me. Today he said he really wants me to read it next. I feel like he wants me to read it to demonstrate that his Christmas gifts were well chosen after all. I don't honestly feel that they were well chosen. Um, and yes, I'm probably being a bit sulky. And I don't want to read the damn book because at this point, its existence is starting to annoy me. Am I being an asshole? I feel like an appreciative person would be grateful that he wants to share and discuss a book and will probably be hurt if I keep not reading it. But it will be a week of my life plowing through this tedious looking thing when I could be reading romance novels and again, hassle is not a gift. Am I the asshole? Okay, so once more, I think very similar to what I just said in the, the last scenario. If you buy a friend, a family member, someone you like, a gift, of course, I hope you do that because you think that they will like this gift, that they will have a good fun with it, that it's something they want, but you also have to accept, you have to be okay with it if you maybe mispick the gift, if it's not something they actually want or want to read, want to do, want to play, whatever it may be. Actually, the diplomatic way to do these things, never ask someone about a gift you gave them. Never be like, so, oh, have you read that book yet? Oh, have you watched that movie yet? Have you played that game yet? Oh, by the way, that vase I gave you three years ago, where is that? Don't do that. It will make you have friendship breaks up all over the place. And I think we can all at least somehow relate to the situation because haven't we all gotten books gifted to us that weren't in any way, shape or form something we were interested in? I definitely had it happen like a lot of the books that, for example, my grandma gave me. I... And there, there were also mostly non-fiction books on subjects that I'm not interested in. Um, I have them sitting in my cupboard somewhere. I have not read them yet. I don't ever plan on reading them, but she has never asked me about them. And that's how we continue on living. And it's really peaceful and harmonious like that. So the husband, okay. It, this kind of sounds like he got her a book on a topic that he's really interested in because apparently he read the book as well and uh, wants to discuss it with her. Now, I I get it and I think it's sweet that if you have a passion and you have a partner, um, it's normal that you want to share that passion with your partner and you want to introduce your partner to this topic, whatever it is you're interested in. And it could be really cute, of course, if your partner also ends up liking that and you have this common interest, then that could be so much fun. But more often than not, I think, if we're being honest, the situation is that you have your interests, your partner has their interests, and maybe some things align, but most things maybe do not align, and you also have to respect that. You always need to respect other people's people's preferences. If if you know, and I mean, again, the husband could just like get the context clues, and probably there's also like a history that he should have known that this is maybe not something that she's interested in, it's something that he's interested in. Um, he shouldn't have given her a book about something that she's not interested in, but he's interested in in the first place. Um, you, have to, you have to respect if a partner doesn't pick up on the same hobbies and interests that you pick up on. Um, of course, it's a normal if like every now and then, especially in the beginning, you kind of try to include them in like this new activity you're into, but then if you realize okay that's not something they're into as well you kind of have to stop forcing them to to do this thing with you to talk about a certain subject that they're not into so uh, once more unfortunate situation everything could be resolved if people just if they just like talked open openly and honestly she could be like okay i was kind of like um i was kind of like hurt by the fact that I didn't maybe feel appreciated because you got me something, first of all, that I already had. You didn't even know I already had those earrings. That was kind of unfortunate, maybe. Plus, you gave me a book about a subject that you're interested in, not me. Can you maybe stop forcing me to read this book because it's not really something I want to read? I mean, talk it out, people. That's honestly always the solutions for all of these scenarios. But um, I, I definitely I understand where she's coming from. Um, but yeah, lesson learned, I suppose. Don't force your partner's 
to, to read 700 page books about topics that they are not interested in. Don't do it. Okay, next one. Am I the asshole for sharing my honest opinion about a book? Never, but let's hear the details first. This happened a bit ago, but is eating at me. For my birthday, I, 17, got a two boom set from my good friend. Two book set, I suppose that's supposed to say. Um, my good friend, who we will call Kate. These books, okay, that's supposed to be books. These books were very popular at my school and as a big reader, I had expressed interest in reading the books. Okay, so tip number one, your friend, your partner, whatever, they actually said that they want the certain book, get them a book that you have heard them talk about that they actually want instead of something that you would want to read. This is turning into a bit of a, I don't know, relationship 101 with me. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Uh, my birthday came and Kay gave me the books and I was super excited. I wrote them a thank you note telling them I was looking forward to reading them. And as I was reading the first book, I again told Kay that I was thankful they had got me the book. However, I didn't actually enjoy the book. Ooh, the writing was good and the characters were well decent. However, the storyline seemed forced and predictable. I didn't say any more about the book and forgot about it. A few months after, in a class where Kay sits next to me, the people behind me were discussing the book and asked if I read it. I said I had and they asked me my opinion. I said, while the writing was good and I was glad I read it, it wasn't my favorite book. They asked why, as they liked the book a lot, and I explained my point of view about the storyline and the characters while also saying I was glad I read it and that I understood why people liked it so much, yet it just wasn't for me. After class, Kay pulled me aside and told me I was a bitch for saying the book wasn't my favorite. <laughs> Especially since it was a gift from them. I told Kay that I appreciated the gift and I was glad I was able to read the book, but I wasn't going to lie about my opinions of the book. Kay called me an asshole <laughs> and said I was ungrateful and showing disrespect for the gift they got me. They ended up saying that I was an ungrateful liar who didn't appreciate the things I was given. I feel bad about sharing my opinion of the book because it clearly hurt Kay, as their behavior after became hostile for a while. They have moved on, they claim, but it still has gotten brought up and used against me. I am honestly wondering if I am the asshole here. I want to know so in the future I don't make the same mistake. Oh, what's wrong with people? No, dear writer, you are not an asshole. Kay is the asshole in this situation. Why would you react so unreasonably? She didn't even like write the book. Because again, like you would maybe get if Kay in this scenario was kind of like sour about it. If they had written the book, even though again, I talked about this before. You don't have the the right. You can't expect someone to love something only because you wrote it, did it, created it, whatever. But this was just a book they they gave them as a present and now they're super mad that it's not their favorite. Um, honestly, I feel like I don't even want to take a lot of time answering this, answering this question or like this, talking about the scenario because it's so obvious that Kay is being insanely unreasonable. Kay is being the, the asshole. It's completely unjustified that they called, um, our like protagonist, let's call them that. I don't know, but an asshole, a bitch, a liar. What the hell? Doesn't sound like a good friend. I. What's wrong with that? What the hell? <laughs> That's the most um, insane one up, up until now. Like with the other ones, you could always say, okay, I see there's like a bit of a problem here, miscommunication, whatever. But this one, Kay is just being a dick. Okay, next one, maybe let's make this the final one so this video doesn't get too long. Am I the asshole for wanting my books to be a certain way? Mm, what do you mean? Okay, hi everyone. So basically, just wanting to know, am I the asshole for a situation that went wrong? My partner and I moved in together last week after 10 months of dating. That's pretty soon. Like personally, I consider that to be like pretty soon for moving in together, but to each their own. Um, we went through COVID lockdowns living together, so we knew we would be fine. Okay, whatever. That's not what this is about. One of my possessions is a big bookshelf totally filled with books. A dream. As I work around 50 plus hours a week, including night shifts, my partner offered to sort the books and put them away, which of course I greatly appreciated being about 250 in books here. Uh oh, this is not going to go well. <laughs> I returned home and loved the way he had arranged them. Okay. 
By author and series, I then noticed one thing. He had arranged them so each book spine was flush with each other in every shelf. Was that me? <laughs> okay, maybe I cannot judge the scenario because I don't know what they're talking about. Um, I, however, don't like them this way as a few of them are old and some of them were damaged, bent in the move. So I then pushed all forward so that the front of each book was flush with the back wall. Ah, okay. So that, so that the front of each book was flush with the back wall of each... Wait. Let me read that again. I don't get it. Okay. I then noticed one thing. He had arranged them so each book's spine was flush with each other in every shelf. I, however, don't like them this way, as a few of them are old and some of them were damaged, bent in the move. So I then pushed them all forward so that the front of each book was flush with the back wall of each shelf and each book was straight. However, this meant that the spines did not meet up and there are gaps. I I'm still not sure if I'm picturing this correctly, to be honest. Um, he then started to complain about his OCD <laughs> and how he can't stand to have my books looking this way. I asked him not to touch them as there were my books in my bookshelf. And since some of them are damaged, keeping them flush with the wall will straighten them out. Fast forward to today and I noticed that he had moved my books back to the way he had them before with all the spines flush with each other. Again, I moved them back and got quite upset with him as I had already asked him to leave them alone. Same scenario happened. He began to complain about his OCD and that he can't stand to look at them that way. I've arranged them. It then proceeded to the fact that this was his house. I moved in with him and if I didn't like it, then I would have to put my book somewhere else. Okay, this is getting dirty. Um, not fair playing. Okay, however, we split costs on the house and agreed when I moved in that it would be our house. So of course I got even more upset by this and told him that I had asked him to leave my books the way I had set them up. He has a lot of things set up the way he likes them and I wouldn't dream of rearranging them because they belong to him. Bearing in mind the main reason that I want to keep the books my way is that being in the bookshelf sandwiched between other books and pushed flat against the back of the shelf will straighten out the book spend in the move. So basically I told him he would need to ignore the bookshelf as he doesn't read anyway and he won't be interacting with the bookshelf to which I was then told I'm selfish. So who is the asshole here? Me or him? Edit, sorry, I should have mentioned he had made an agreement with me while I was at work that he would sort them out and I would put them away myself. I had also told him the reason why I wanted them that way when I first moved, moved them back. Second edit, he doesn't have diagnosed OCD. He thinks he has it because he likes to have things in a certain way around the house. <sighs> okay, so I think there are two issues here and maybe one of them, even though that's the more serious issue, it's it's not something this video is about, but the fact that in an argument, he started being like, well, this is actually my house. You only moved in here. That's a no-go. That's completely not okay. So that's like a serious argument that they would need to talk about. And I could also talk about it here, but this is supposed to be like about the funny book aspect. So I'm, also, I'm only gonna like focus on that now. Now, aren't we book lovers all quite particular about the way we want our shelves arranged. Yes, we are, and that's okay because we love our books. We like to arrange them in a special way. For example, I, how do I arrange my books? Um, kind of like, like really randomly, just like by color, putting certain books together because I like how like their covers, or like the, the colors of their covers look next to each other or like their spines, uh, I guess it would be. Um, or like I, um, I put them together by size because I have some like really big oversized editions and so I put all of them together even though that wouldn't make them be organized by author anymore or like I, I got like one part of a series that I put down to like these oversized books because it's the only one sticking out um, with the with the other books in the series like stuff like that. I have like my certain way of arranging it and I too I would be upset like if I came home one day and like my, my housemates would have rearranged all my books. I would be like, uh, what the fuck? These are my books. What do you go around like rearranging them? Especially like if they, if none of the books belong to them, if they don't really have any business with the bookshelf other than that they claim they they get horribly upset by the way it looks. Oh, I, I have like a good anecdote to say though, because um 
Oh, wait a second. I can actually grab the book. Okay, so here, my anecdote before I will get back to this. Um, I, most of my books are arranged really nicely in the in a, the kind of like living dining room. So it's like a public space. These are not all in my personal room, but they're like in an open space that other people who live in this house have access to and they also like use the room. Um, it is completely fine that I put my books there though, um, otherwise the shelves would be empty, who would want them? Plus, most like all my books, they're like super pretty and colorful and who would have anything against it? But there was like one point or like book to be more specific that I disagreed with, um, with my mother though, because I'm living together with my mother. Um, I had put this book, Human Acts by Hang Gang, on display like that. I had like put it up in one of the shelves, kind of like this, so you could see the cover because I think it's really pretty. Um, but then at one point, my mom asked me to like remove it, put like a different book up there because she didn't like the way you could see the thorax exposed, like a the body, the skeleton thorax exposed. Also, it's like in our dining room. So she was just like, mm, I would rather not look at that every day. Um, I was kind of like sad because I, I really like this cover. Personally, I don't, I don't get bothered by the fact that there are like bones on the cover. I like how it's like yellow and like these golden ginkgo leaves. I think it's really pretty. I wouldn't have minded looking at it some more, but because my books are in a public space, so to say, in our house, um, I respected her opinion and I changed it out with um, Kim Ji Young, born 1982, with that cover. With that cover, my mom is fine with, so that's kind of like a situation I have to think about right now um, as I was reading this. Because if your books are in like a room of the house that, it not, that is not just specifically your room, you it is reasonable that some of the other people you're living with might have some requests as to that because if it's like in a public space they too have the right to decide how you like decorate that public space right um but for example this um i i considered like even though i didn't agree with my mother i got that it's like a reasonable thing to ask because it was like okay she does not want to look at a thorax the entire time okay i personally don't mind it but I, res I get it, I respect that you feel that way, so I changed it out. Um, if my mother would have only said, I don't like that it's yellow, put like a different color book there, that for example wouldn't have made so much sense, right? So, I mean, I don't really know, I don't, I'm don't. i not familiar with the ins and outs of OCD, how bad that really gets, how it makes you feel and all of that, so I can't really judge the what would that be the medical the scientific side of it all but if it boils down to him just being like mm -hmm, but i like to have them arranged this way but when she's like dude do not touch my fucking books because i want to have them arranged that way because they are my fucking books then i think in this case he has to respect her preference as those are her books um it's not about something offensive on a cover or something like that it's about how the spines are arranged on the shelf and stuff like that. I think he needs to get over it, especially if he's like he's not diagnosed officially with anything. It more seems like that he likes to have his knickknacks in like a certain order and that he kind of like gets all mm, flustered if they're not arranged in that order. But that's the thing, like when you're living together with the person, if you're not living alone, things will not always be the way you want them to be. This is an example of that. And this is a quite harmless as I believe, example of that. And you have to learn to be okay with that, to compromise, to give and take together with your partner. And in this situation, um, I think that the, what is it, like the partner, the guy, was it mentioned that he's a man? I'm not sure anymore. Um, he, he should let it go. He should just let her have the books arranged in the way that she likes to. Maybe he has a suggestion. Maybe is it a possibility to put the bookshelf in a room of the house, I don't know how many rooms you have, that is like her room or like in a corner of the house that he usually doesn't go to, you know what I'm saying here, so that he wouldn't have to look at it anymore. Maybe you could kind of like find a compromise within that realm, but other than that, it's like you will have to figure this one out. Otherwise, this might be a sign that you should have moved together after 10 months of dating after all. 
Okay, guys, that was it. Those were what we did five, I believe. Yeah, five Am I the Asshole bookish scenarios. I had a great time. Tell me if you also enjoyed this video. I think there are, yep, there are way more of these. So I could definitely do a part two, part three, however many you like. Um, I thank Ben and Christine for the inspiration for this video. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.